I'm back with a new video on the latest prototype of the electric eel wheel yarn counter. It's been a while since my previous video on this product and that's because I had sent off the previous version to some of my beta testers which takes a little while and then they gave, gave me a lot of really valuable feedback which I had to incorporate into a new prototype which is what I'm going to be showing today. It really addresses a lot of uh, edge cases and, and makes some of the core features a lot better. First off, I want to go through the basic setup of the comb winder. So this is the yarn counter and this is optional, but the idea here is as the yarn comes through this, it counts the yarn and you can have it set up to beep like that and then that will stop the cone winder and that software is already working. Then this is the latest version of my tensioner. Uh, I found that this central tension disc isn't really very useful. I'm still considering whether to include it or not, but uh, the metal peg system I've extended and added some extra metal pegs and it really works well for a, a wide variety of yarns at this point. And this is the cone winder itself. I have a little tool that comes with it which helps pull through the yarn under the drum. It makes this process a little bit easier. And then after you've done that, you just want to wrap the yarn a few times around the cone like this. And at this point, there's a little key thing holding it. I find that a lot of, even my beta testers, don't use the key all the time. Uh, but it's kind of nice uh, when you're starting out and not sure how to hold the drum. But I did add a little uh, groove here to hold the uh, arms up a little bit easier. And that's really all there is to it. At this point then, you just turn it on. And it starts, oops, turn it on and it starts winding. So now I'll talk about some of the improvements since the previous prototypes. I did strengthen a lot of the parts underneath and stuff. Uh, these are 3D printed, which makes them a lot weaker than the final injection molded parts. But some of my beta testers uh, found areas where um, there was some damage during shipping. So I, I really uh, looked at the areas that could potentially not be strong enough. Uh, even with 3D printed parts and reinforce them. And now I'm quite confident that they'll be much stronger, even with 3D print, printed parts. And when I move to the injection molded parts, uh, they'll be uh, more than strong enough. Another thing that I've done is a software change. So it used to be that the speed ramp was really slow to ramp up, which people loved. My beta tester said they wanted it, but like here, if I, I activate it with this, also a new feature, this foot switch, I added a plug in the back uh, for a foot switch because some of the testers found that when they were doing uh, certain types of yarn off of skeins or they would get tangles and stuff, they wanted to have a foot switch to stop it. So I added one of those and the foot switch along with the on off switch uh, still have sort of this slow ramp up speed, which they really liked. So it, it slowly ramps up and it slowly ramps down. But they said um, they didn't want this dial to also be slow. So I made it so that the dial can be much more responsive now and it doesn't have the slow ramp. So you basically get to control how much ramping there is with the speed with the dial. It's sort of a little thing, but my beta testers really preferred this new method of sort of choosing whether the dial or, or doing the this nice gentle ramp with switches like this and the power switch, but also uh, having the option to control it much more quickly with your fingers if you wanted to do that manually on the speed control. This next one I'll have to set the camera down for, but um, one of the uh, things people had issues with were the, the cones here would fall out of place. So what I did was, people know I've used a lot of magnets in the past, and I actually put in some magnets right here and right over here that sort of hold this whole flyer arm 
assembly. It sort of snaps into place and the magnets hold it so it does not come out anymore. Something else I did with the cone was I moved the notch from up here to down here and then I put a little hole up here in the cones and what that does is you can use this for tags. Some people said they wanted to be able to put tags onto their cone. So now there's a spot for that. And having the little notch, if you do want to put your yarn to start it into a notch, it turns out to be better to use it down there. Also, it's hard to see on the video, but I put little bumps uh, onto uh, the 3D printed cones. And the final cones will have a lot more bumps. But um, it sort of holds the yarn in place. It grips onto the yarn a lot better than the old cones uh, that I was using. And that's definitely a, a nice advantage. You'll have noticed when I was putting this on, it had no issues with uh, the cone or the yarn slipping, which did happen a little bit with the older cones. Another thing I added was I added this little piece to this arm holder. And what that does is that gives you a nice place to grip this when you're putting it down. Uh, which was nice before you could, I mean, you can still grab it by the arms and this does give you more leverage, but some people wanted to do it from the middle. So it didn't uh, add any expense to add that little feature and it just gives you another option. Some people did prefer uh, using that method of setting down the arm rather than holding on to the cone or onto the side of the arm, but any of them work. Uh, another thing I've worked on and it's kind of humbling for me, I thought I knew my geometry pretty well, but these arms actually have angles. Um, at They have two different sets of angles, and the angles are in three dimensions. And I thought I could do the trigonometry, but it's actually taken me a few tries to get it so that the cones sit flat onto the uh, drum. And uh, that that's because of the how the um, cone here is angled and the drum is flat. So you actually have to twist the, the arms in um, two different dimensions in order to make that work. So there three dimensions. So it was kind of a fun math problem, something I haven't done uh, for a while now. One of the big changes I made to this version was I added another dial in the back uh, right here. And what this does is this controls how much current the, can go to the motor before the motor shuts off. And the idea was that was that if there's a tangle or something, the, there's going to be more stress on the motor and then you can turn off the motor at that point. So like here's a, an example of how it would work. So you get it going and if there's a tangle, it, it just kind of shuts off the motor. I blink this back light so people know what's gone wrong. And at that point you can just uh, whoops, wrong dial, the speed dial over here, I can get it back to zero and um, start going again. Uh, now, the thing with that is it's kind of finicky to set up and the yarn just slips out of the drum. So this would be kind of designed for really thin yarn and getting it set up for very thin yarn is going to be really difficult. Uh, so what I found to be a better solution than this. So I'm going to have this in the uh, a little question about this and, you know, give me your feedback on what you think. But I think I should end up just removing this. I think it's too finicky to sort of set this up and it, it's going to depend on the yarn you're setting. So you're not going to be able to set it and forget it. So, and, and how the yarn's coming off, if you have it a little tangle um, on like a, a swift or something and it's going to keep coming off but there's like a little jerk or something that will cause the motor to get triggered off so i don't really think this is the best solution but i have i've played around with it it works okay and if people really want it i can definitely leave it in it it adds a little bit of cost but not too much cost and most of the engineering work is done already there's a few things i could improve in software but uh it's pretty much done i just i don't think it's worth including uh let me show you how i would how tangles would be handled if this is sort of set to not trigger. So here's a better way to handle tangles in my opinion. If we just start it up with the foot switch and now let's say we go out here and we artificially cause a tangle. What's going to happen is there's just going to be slipping here and nothing actually gets wound onto the cone if you get the tangle undone. Uh, if you don't want it to start slipping like that, you know, you can just hit the foot switch 
when you see a tango, if you're watching it, and that stops. So I think that there's multiple protections already, and I don't think that we need to sort of monitor the motor and turn off the machine. I think these other methods of stopping the yarn um, work well enough, and I guess I'd like your feedback. And lastly, I'm not going to show this because this prototype doesn't have it. I don't actually have a prototype. I actually have to get these parts um, injection molded, but I've switched to a new rubber um, gasket method of holding the cones in place. So some of my beta testers were noticing these cones would come off the arms sometimes. Here, I'll, I guess I'll show you how it's done right now. But um, let's see. So these are just sort of sitting in there, and they do stick in pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm going to add a special custom uh, gasket a uh, rubber gasket to this and the cones will stick on even better when you do that. Uh, so that's going to be much nicer. I want to show you how it, the yarn actually goes on this drum because it's pretty interesting. It just sort of winds back and forth on these grooves. There's like little ramps cut into the groove that sort of guide it back and forth. Uh, it's really a, a clever design. Now, this is not something I can take credit for. This is a, a drum that's been used in the textile industry for a, a very long time to roll wind cones and uh, other things that they want to control the yarn on. But it's really a clever system, and it's sort of the core of this. I'm just designing a, a little enclosure uh, at an affordable price for you guys that uses this technology that's been around in uh, commercial textile industry for uh, a very long time. And that's the end of the yarn here. I'll stop it so you can see what a fully wound cone looks like. I guess I'll go over here. This is uh, just a 3D printed base for the cones, and I'll, I'll give out the file for this for free. It's really simple. Um, you can either, you know, screw it onto um, something, or you can just put a little weight into there, and then you'd have a weighted base. But without even that, it uh, really holds the cones in place nice. They don't move. Uh, I'm also going to be releasing 3D printed... Uh, printable files for the cone and these arms and then you'll be able to make different versions for different uh, sized cones. It's, I'll, I'll have a video about it. I think I've already talked about it some but I've changed how it works. It works a lot better than it used to um, where you just have to enter in a few dimensions from your cone, sort of its length and the small end, the large end, and then it will generate automatically generate an arm for you that works well with that cone. So all of that will be free uh, things that I give away uh, digital file wise. And if you've got a 3D printer, you can make it. Otherwise, I'll uh, point you to some companies that will 3D print them for you. But that's kind of the current state of the cone winder. And there's definitely more to do, but. I'm happy with the progress. It's really getting to be pretty rock solid. Uh, a lot of my beta testers really loved it the way it was. Some of them found some issues. So all of that was helpful. I'm pretty sure that uh, we're getting close to the final version. I want to do a few additional tweaks, but um, I'll keep everybody updated. And I'll probably start getting it ready for production pretty soon. And as people know, I like to get things pretty far along before I run the Kickstarter so that I can better estimate how long it's going to take to ship it to you guys. And I really feel like for this product, I want to get the plastic molds made so that I can really verify that everything is the way I want it uh, with the molds. And then I'll run the Kickstarter to figure out um, how much interest there is and then I can sort of buy parts to make as many as I need to uh, fulfill those Kickstarter orders plus have some extras for my store. So that's kind of the plan. I don't really have a, a solid time frame, but I'm, I'm hoping to run the Kickstarter for this sometime in the probably second half of this year, and it, it's 2022. So if you're watching this video far in the future, uh, go check out my website. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes 
uh, dreamingrobots.com and uh, it might have some more information about the coal miner at that time. But if it's still 2022 for you, uh, then uh, just keep watching for future videos. Maybe sign up for my email newsletter and I'll keep you all posted. Thanks for watching.